<laughs> Hello and welcome back to Robin's Roundup with me, Jake Matho, Tom Lanford and Sean Fisher. We're really excited to bring you Ashton United back again with live coverage, any type of reaction that we can get for you fans who I'm sure are just as excited as us. The first thing that we're going to touch on to is the pre-season that we had. Tom, I think you're the best person to touch on to that because of the fact that you've been to every game? Uh, every bar one. Every bar one, which is a lot more than we can say. And you can also compare it to what happened at the start of the season before, which wasn't quite as good as this season, was it? No, last season's pre-season was terrible. We didn't win a single game. Um, I think the best performance we had last season was a 2-2 draw with Oldham. We were 2-0 up and then just bottled it in like the last 10 minutes. But then this season, I think it was, I think I went to the first game, which was Cliff Row, and we just looked so good. And it didn't feel like a pre-season game either. I think both teams had just missed football yeah. and just wanted to get back on the pitch. And I think that's been like a familiar theme throughout the whole of pre-season, to be honest. Every game has felt very competitive that both sides won it. Maybe bar the traffic game, that was like, you know, a little bit dull. Yeah, the game really was yeah, yeah. But every other game has been, you know, action packed, lots of goals, lots of enjoyment for the fans when they could come back. Obviously, I'm guessing we'll touch on the, the swinging game as well, which was just phenomenal. But yeah, there's a lot of encouraging signs from that pre-season. I think, yeah, you mentioned the traffic game, which was a bit <clears throat> like of a downbeat game compared to the games we had previously. We also had the Runcorn game, it was immediately a couple of days after the Swindon game, wasn't it? Yeah. You were at the Swindon game, weren't you, Sean? I was. How did you find that? <clears throat> well, it was my first game back. Obviously, everyone had a, such a long break from football. You, you mentioned one of those. All the games have been really competitive. We've been three wins on the bounce. We had a bit of expectation going into it because obviously it's Swindon. They're so many leagues higher. League two us. champions. League two champions. It's the first time they've played since winning the league, I believe, as well. Um, their first game of pre-season. Um, we obviously come into it as underdogs, but we thought, you know, anything could happen. But if we kind of went into it, it kind of was like a competitive match. It was like the biggest, biggest game for us going into it. Uh, they were up for it as well. And what a first half. I, we couldn't believe our own eyes. It was four goals in the first half, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. We were 4-0 up at one point and wow, I could not believe it. I think we echoed a lot of the fans by saying we'd have been happy oh, yeah. with an inspired defeat. And instead, yeah. we were destroying them in that mm -hmm. first half. I don't think they really came into it until the final five minutes. Would you agree with I, me? I'd agree with that. And then obviously the second half was a different tale. Obviously they brought a lot more first team players on. Yeah. And you could just tell that they were gelling and we were rotating our side as well, trying to find you know, the best formula for when competitive action started. But a 4-3 win against the League 2, League two champions, sorry. Just a good result, isn't it? Exactly. And you mentioned the fact that we continue to rotate in the second half despite being I think it was 4-1 at half time you mm. could tell that they were coming back they had a goal disallowed so we breathed a bit of a gap at half time which would have been a bit worrying if it was only two goals advantage yeah they did get the two goals in the second half albeit the last one was in added time I think or right at the end yeah but we did like I said we did continue to rotate it wasn't about the result it was about getting everyone in <clears throat> and I think that touches on something that Michael Clegg said uh, when he was doing a training exercise again with like the players yeah. was that he said didn't he when we went to watch them that there was a team that were good and a team of um, what was the word he used? He said like grafters and yeah. battlers didn't he? And the grafters <laughs> and battlers won in the end in the little mm -hmm. friendly match they had against each other and it just goes to show that when they rotated the side with maybe not the first team players mm -hmm. They still had players that were able to hold out and be disciplined, weren't they? Yeah, I think that's something Michael Clay has done, you know, really well in the transfer market, to be honest. He's brought in a lot of quality and a lot of depth in our side. Yeah. You think for some players it's going to be very difficult to hold down a position because there is that much quality and then there's, there's so many players who can play in different positions as well. Yeah. And I don't think there's been a player who's had a bad pre-season, to be honest. You know, there's one or two who have just, you know, just trying to find their feet, but then there's others who've come straight in, obviously, Brad Lynch, He's at the ground running. I think Ali, towards the start of pre-season, has done fantastically. Obviously, tailed off a little bit towards the end, but maybe that was just because he just wants that competitive action. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. And then you said you went to the traffic game in Europe. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> a bit of like a, a sobering exercise, yeah. wasn't it? It was a bit of a sobering one. Obviously, it was after Swindon, and then we went away, I believe. Terrible weather. Who was the game against? Runcorn. Runcorn lost 1-0. Uh, it was a bit of like, it was trailing on from the Sunday game almost, but as you said, Tom, about the competition, going into that game and looking for the lineups, you didn't really know who was going to start because we've got so many players that can play in different positions. And then Clegg's obviously touched on experimenting with the team, we've tried to up top, we've tried different formations, which is obviously what pre-season's about. Um, but yeah, as you say, Trafford, we were a bit slow, they kind of sat back, we couldn't really break them down, and the hits on the counter, which is 
if there's any talent to be hit on the counter and learn from it, it's in pre-season. I think we learned a lot from that game, almost as much as from the Swindon game. We played obviously really well in Swindon, but we kind of learned more about our weaknesses in the traffic game. Um, still grinded out a result there, it was quite good. Yeah. He implemented, he was implementing quite a few trialists in as well in some of the friendly matches to see yeah. if, he, if they were like worthy of maybe something mm -hmm. more long, long term. And I think a player that that leads on to quite nicely was the likes of Brad Lynch. Yeah. And that touches very nicely into our first competitive game, which we had just gone this weekend. The FA Cup game, joining in a, a, a year around early, yeah. which was something that is like, it's got the pros and cons. It's a bit of extra money if you can get through it, but you've got to win it. Yeah. And Squires Gate, had you heard of them really before? Never. Didn't know no. they were a club. So you don't really well, know what to expect. They're on TV, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. But that was about a week or two maybe beforehand. But it was during the traffic game. <clears throat> yeah, and they dispatched the Main Road, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we were looking at that actually, and we saw a few of the facts about them. We went onto the website, found the players' names. I think his name was Dean Ng. He scored a hat trick against Main Road. So there were a few players we had to watch out for, and they gave us a game, didn't they? They definitely gave us a game. You could tell they were well up for it. I feel maybe if they were like a little bit better quality going forward, they easily could have got a result against us. They definitely made us work for that 2-0 win. Mm. Defensively, they just weren't at the races, to be honest. I feel we created multiple, multiple chances. We probably had enough chances to win maybe three or four games by the end of it. But defensively, we just, just something just doesn't, doesn't, get my words out, doesn't seem quite right at the moment. I don't know what it is. Mm. And there was a theme throughout pre-season when we played teams like Trafford, where Sean mentioned, it was hard to break them down. I, I, I kind of felt that again. You know, there was times where we just dominated the ball, but just struggled to kind of just create anything to just, you know, penetrate the bass. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Well, you mentioned the defence. We had Sam Baird, who we've <laughs> also signed this summer. Mm -hmm. He is slowly getting to grips, I think, with the team around him and the new partnership he's bonding with Michael Range, which looks like at times, it is a very formidable partnership, mm -hmm. and then at times it just you can tell it's a bit, it's new. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what I think we we realised against Scarborough and a couple of the friendly matches. The two of them just just struggling to just get on the same wavelength. Yeah. That being said, Reigns has been one hell of a signing, hasn't he? He's just, yeah. he just he just you can I feel like you can boost it, and I think the fans can also see that he's just shown his like experience, experience and everything. Fact. It's exactly what you need really, and then when you pair it with Sam Baird, you're like, it's quite young. He's a lot younger than him anyway. I think he's 22. Well, that's young for a centre-back, really, yeah. isn't it? So it's quite a good partnership. As you said, it is raw, but looking forward to the season, that does look like a partnership that can really blossom. Yeah. The back for us. The main, <clears throat> um, the main guy we were talking about, though, main trialist that we ended up signing, did shine, though, didn't he? He did. Brad Lynch, new signing. Uh, was he from Atherton? Uh, he played for a bit of last season. So yeah. he's played under Clegg before, so yeah. Clegg knows what he's what he's getting, and he he'd said that in a few... Um, yeah a few interviews after a friendly match I think we had, he was saying how like the best is yet to come. And well, he shone, didn't he? He really did, to be honest. I, um, I slated him on commentary in the first 10 minutes. Not slated him, but just said I didn't think it was maybe the game for him. There was a few... He was pulling up, wasn't he? Yeah, he there was a few, a few issues in the first five, 10 minutes where he was just getting bodied off the ball. And yeah. I thought he just looks a little bit too weak for this game. It seemed more like a physical battle that he was going to have to endure throughout the game. And I didn't think it was a game he would shine in, prove me wrong, and he just came to life, it's like really? something just clicked for him. It was the run as well, I, everyone's seen the goal, it's a fantastic the pass goal. from Sam Sheridan. Time shares are time! learn to expect from Sam Sheridan. It is indeed, but uh, and then he continued that throughout the second half. Yeah. He looks a really good option on that left hand really side, does. doesn't he? Especially it's just I like to watch players who just grab the ball and just drive yeah. it. And I think that can, you know, excel a team, especially when a team is just sat back against us, which I expect a lot of teams to come and do at Hurst Cross this season where they're just gonna sit probably like a four four two low block. Yeah not move out of their own half at times. Yeah. And you need a player with that little bit of skill, that little bit of quality. It's take a risk. Exactly, yeah. take a risk and just drive through the team. And he was fantastic, mm. wasn't he? It looked like it was just going to be in some of the pre-season games that Millie Ali, another signing mm. we've we've um, got our hands on, he was going to be the guy from the left-hand side coming in. And I think you said that in, when we saw that Lynch and Ali were going to be starting. Yeah. We were a bit interested to know why Lynch was starting on the left. But yeah. it just goes to show they can both perform on either side, so it's just yeah, got a bit of versatility really there, so there's something else for us to do. 
There's also then the looking at the attacking options. We've got Josh Wilson, who was top scorer last season with double figures, and twenty plus goals. And things. Did he make nearly, nearly? But he's got plenty. Of, he got plenty of goals in open play. He also yeah. is very reliable from the penalty spot. So he can finish, but then we've also added to that, of course, with the signing of Louis Almond, who also looked extremely, extremely good um, at Tom the end Bentham of last season. Well. And now we've signed Tom Bentham, who we said this on commentary in the game against Squires Gate. It was not for the lack of like getting in the right place, wasn't mm. it, for Tom Bentham? It was just the finish, wasn't it? It was just the finish. I imagine if we had like expected goal models at that league, he'd, he'd be flying. <laughs> he really would. <laughs> he'd yeah. be on about three or four, to be honest. He had. He had the, the biggest chances of the game, to be honest. He just couldn't put the ball away. It was like one of them games where no matter what he did, the ball just wouldn't go in the back of the net. But it's very encouraging signs yes. when you see that from a player. I'd rather see him you know, miss a, a hat full of chances against... Go with the non-existent. Exactly. He's getting in the right positions. And if you keep doing that time and time again, again eventually it's going <clears> to you know, yeah. come to a goal. Exactly. Have you seen much of Tom Bentham? I have. The one thing I was slightly disappointed mm -hmm. with is after Trafford... Clegg mentioned that he wanted to try the two up top of Almond and Bentham, obviously both quite physical, good at finishing. Yeah. Um, tried it for Erlen, obviously Almond pulled up about nine minutes in, so we didn't quite get to see that blossom yeah, yeah. and see what could happen with it. Um, but it definitely is an option for the league. Um, it, was, it, was a tough, well, it was a tough game as well, because like, of course Almond pulled up. Yeah. Then of course in the FA Cup it was just Bentham because Almond had, had been injured, regained yeah. full fitness. And as we've touched on as well, it was a feisty encounter, wasn't it, throughout? Because Squires yeah. game, I think they knew that they had to take the game. Could tell it was competitive. Yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so we were winning 1-0 thanks to Brad Lynch's lovely chip that he scored in the first half. But we knew that we needed a second goal because they had plenty of chances themselves. And quite frankly, could have maybe should have been level at times. We needed that second goal. And... Wilson was playing a bit deeper than usual. Yeah. We brought Almond on and then he got injured again. Mm. So it just looked like one of those games that we were going to struggle to grind out the win because we were missing the chances maybe with Bentham. Almond was struggling with his injury. And then Mr. Reliable turned up, <laughs> as per usual. But um, So it is looking promising for all those positions. Yeah, definitely. Which leads us on nicely to, just before we look at some fixtures that might be worth pointing out to you, I'm just going to touch on what we're going to do at the end of this. Yeah. And that is... I'm going to ask Tom and Sean, and I'll give an opinion myself, as to where we think we'll finish at the end of the season. If we'll be maybe some wild cards in the Cups, maybe. What's, maybe what Cup round we'll go out in. Nice. Or, are we going to win it? Good thing. We'll see. Well, but then also, <laughs> also, who do you think the top scorer will be? And who do you think your player of the year will be? And I mean, if you've got a stand-up player of the year, maybe it's worth mentioning someone that might just stand up to you, like a bright spark. I think mm. they had it in the Premier League, where it was like, Brightest spark or something like that. Kind of like a breakthrough player. Right? Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Scene, one. Yeah. Breakthrough player. I knew everyone yeah. would be. Yeah. But anyway, before whilst you ever think about that, you ever think about that whilst you're watching, if you fancy it, put it in the comments or whatnot. A few fixtures that may be worth just mentioning to you. Scarborough is the game that we've got in the FA Cup. How are we feeling for that, Sean? I mean, How are you for a regionalised draw, we couldn't get really much further away, could we, to be honest? Rich, but, um, literally. Especially now. On a, on a Tuesday as well, it's, it's going to be heavy, but um, obviously a tough opposition as well. Not great uh, for the first round, but... Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll see, we'll go, I'm, I'm sure we'll give it as all. Well. Was it Murph? Will... Murph that went? Yeah, me So Sean Murphy. Murphy went to the last game, so shame we can't have Sean on the show today, but... How did you find it when we went to Scarborough? Because that was a bit of a handbags game as well, wasn't it? it was, it's a nice ground, I'll give it that. It's a lovely ground. Long, long journey. It's mm. going to be painful on a Tuesday night if I do end up going. Without um, a team bus as well. Without a team bus as well, so it's like nightmare. But, um, no, it was it was one of them where we were matching them in the first half and then obviously the Thompson incident. Mm. Obviously a lot of questions mm. around that. It's, it's one of them where they're going to be a tough test. Yeah. It's probably one of the toughest draws we could have got in that first yeah. round. Either that or maybe South Shields or like FC United. It's up there. But if we want to make it to the first round of the FA Cup, we've got to beat yeah. these teams, you know what I mean? So let's just give it our best. If, if it doesn't come off, it doesn't come off. We go yeah. again next year. One of the final games of the season we played before the cancellation of the season. We mm. did beat them, didn't we? Yeah, we, we did. 2-0, I believe. So yeah. like, we can definitely do it. And the way things are going in pre-season would suggest that we could. Yeah. Yeah. So like we go there with confidence, but there is a lot of, because of the situation, that may have a bit of an after effect on us. But we'll have to just wait and see. So that is next Tuesday. 
So for those of you that are travelling up, good luck with your journeys. We then have, we have got Bram, uh, we've got Stafford first, I beg your pardon, we've got Stafford first this weekend away. That'll be an interesting one. Back with the old manager, Jody Bannon, yeah. um, going to visit him. So it'd be interesting to see how that goes because Stafford can count themselves somewhat fortunate to still be in this league because of the virus, because it didn't look like it was they were going to stay up, did it? No. So probably a game that you'd think on the paper we should be looking to win if yeah. we want to finish high up in the league. Um, but it'll be interesting because, of course, Bannon's going to want it. Of course, yeah. Down. Club, yeah. Exactly. Then we've got our first home game of the season. It's Bamba Bridge, a week on Saturday. Um, we mentioned that, I think. There was a few a few like qualms of what day it would be, but because of the FA Cup, it yeah. seems like Saturday just makes so much more sense than yeah. pulling it back. Then it's maybe the... Is it an early title challenge? I don't know. <laughs> but it's one that definitely will allow us to like, stake our claim. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll stake our claim and we'll be able to say, like, if we can win again. We've got South Shields... A week on Tuesday, am I getting that right? Yeah, a week on Tuesday, so a week after the Scarborough game. It's the second home game of the season, a few days after Bamber Bridge. How do you feel? I mean, I feel like we have to see them play first, but how do you feel about them? Uh, it's going to be a tough test, isn't it? At least it's not away on a Tuesday night. Yes. At least they've got to come to us. And yeah. obviously with the current COVID situation, it is a little bit more a pain in the arse to travel down to games. Exactly. So hopefully that works in our favour and we can get, you know, you're looking at that the uh, the results we've got. Stafford away, you know. Clegg wants to get three points. I imagine he's got like his mystic his little predictions. Yeah, yeah, he's got his little mystic predictions man. again. And I imagine he's looked at them games and probably gone six out of nine points. Obviously, yeah. he wants to beat Stafford. Bamber Bridge at home, he should be getting should should be getting a win there. And then South Shields is one of them. It could either go our way. Or they could come and do a job like they did on us last year. One thing I'd say about South Shields, I actually reckon the players will be looking forward to it because it's one of the few games in the league we can say we've got another dog status and we can just mm. go out and play our own game. If we lose, we've lost. You think South, South Shields, Shields they would be really going for it after the 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 way that they were yeah, so much kind of to go up? Yeah, stole it off them. But um, it's yeah, it's the one one of the games we can go in as underdogs, play freely, play as we do, and not feel any pressure and just go for it. Yeah, um, exactly. And, in that way, it's kind of a really good test for us, yeah. Yeah, so that's one to look forward to. That is on the 29th of September. We then have the Boxing Day trip, as we always do, against <laughs> FC United. That one's away. I believe the home game will probably be around Easter Monday, won't it? Something, I think like, so, something yeah, along those lines. And then, of course, last game of the season. Who would write it? We've got Allerton at home, so Clegg gets to see his old, his old foes as he hopefully is lifting the Northern Premier League trophy. So hopefully it's already signed, sealed and delivered by that point. Exactly. <laughs> enjoy it, exactly. So I feel like I've, we've kind of all suggested what we're feeling for our final position, but we'll go <laughs> into that now. I'll, I'll go first with my final position. I am optimistic. I think we all are. But I feel like it's one of those where I would like to say, of course I'd like to say, we're going to win the league. But it's one of those leagues where only one team can go up, so it's one of those things where you can't really be too disappointed if you do finish in the top five or six. So I'm going to say we're going to get playoffs. And if if we win the league, it's just that cherry on the cake, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. How are you feeling, Sean? I was thinking the exact same. I think to go that we're going to win the league when South Shields are obviously still in it, I feel like they're almost owed it in a way. Um, I was going to go for a solid third. No, not I, owed it. Not owed it. <laughs> <laughs> but third, yeah. optimistic as well. And it's one of those things where... Give or take first, mm -hmm. we'll take yeah. it around then. Tom? Yeah, I'm feeling that theme as well, to be honest. I was a little bit hyped last season, obviously it was a massive down in the end. But maybe I just had like rose-tinted glasses on in the end and just couldn't see through the yeah. cracks. I feel this season I've been a little bit more pessimistic. I've seen that there are faults within our side that do need to be improved. There are just a little, one or little two things. Not realistic, yeah. Yeah, but I think Clegg, you know, he's got that pedigree of winning leagues. And it's something that it just becomes a habit in the end and he knows what he's doing. So, like you guys, I feel it could either be first we go up or we go up through the playoffs, maybe like a fourth place finish. Really so confident right and then you're confident first. we'll go up. <laughs> I'm confident we're going to go up. I feel, you know, he's built a very good side here and he knows what he wants and how he, how he can get it. That'll definitely be the goal in the dressing room, won't it? It'll yeah, be the best yeah this 100%. Season. Well, we're all very confident, so the fact that we're so confident <clears> to get at least the top five finish would suggest our top scorer is going to be in the 15 to 20 goals region. Yeah, yeah. I think I know yours is because you've <laughs> mentioned them before, if he can stay fit. Yeah. So who is your top um, goal scorer? I'm calling for Louis Allman. Louis Allman. If he can stay yeah. fit. You know, every time I see him, he, he, sometimes he just does nothing all game, and yeah. then we'll just get on the turn, 
bang for goal. And he's just been he's gonna have a full season. He's had a pre season with us as well. We've brought in extra more like attacking players as well who can put the ball into the yeah. box for him. We've still got Lafuda as well, we can just feed him every single time and you think if he gets a good run where he can stay injury free, obviously at the moment that's not looking great. But if he can get injury free, keep himself fit, he will bag ten to fifteen, maybe even twenty goals if he can hit form. Yeah, no, I would echo those words. How about you? I was thinking of Ilman as well. Every time I seem to watch him, he seems to score. Like like Tom said, it's just one chance. He's absolutely clinical in front of goal. Uh, and almost the fact that we aren't relying on him so much, the fact that we've got other players around him, I think might suit him more. Just the fact that he can play his own game, get his goals. And yeah, I think, as we say, 15, 18, 20 goals a season. Okay, okay. I, I, I respect both of you. <laughs> but I'm going to be different because I feel like it's one of those things. It'd be nice to be different just so that when I'm right, I can tell you you were both when wrong. I'm right, yeah. yeah. I'm going to stick with the ever so present Josh Wilson. Hopefully he can stay in the team. Maybe he'll be more adapting to his deeper role. Yeah. We shall see if Thanks that is things. yeah if that is what happens. But he is the set piece taker. He's very reliable from set pieces. Josh, please maintain that. Now that I've said, that I think he will be top scorer. But it will be between the two of them. I think we can agree on that. And maybe Bentham will like to take his claim as well if he can start hitting some form. I think you've got some goals from the wings as well. I think Brad Lynch, Ali. Yeah, I, I think I agree Castle. with you, but I feel like. The likes of Omen and that should be oh, they'll be above and beyond. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll jump in as well. So, before we finish, our last thing to cover is who we think our player of the year will be. Are we committing to your top scorer or no. are you going somewhere else? Well, we'll start with Sean. If you, have you got one or should we start? Uh, I feel like I owe someone a bit of a shout out. Oh, okay, come on then. I think I'm going to go Michael Brewster. Oh, okay. Like, you know what? In, in pre season, he owed a shout out. I know what you mean. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> yeah, didn't put him on team of the season last year. Uh, but no, in pre-season he was really good on the ball. Mm. Um, just kind of that box to box, he filled in it right back at Trafford as well. Um, I think he can. He's almost one of them that isn't going to score and assist as much as maybe other players. But in terms of grafting and actual just quality on the ball, he's mm. really he's got bad. the vibe of a captain because he's yeah, so yeah, vocal completely. and he's, he's so, so motivating. Well. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you there. Yeah. How about you, Tom? Yeah, just a just a. Add further to that point, obviously, like we, we see all the players because we follow them on Twitter and stuff and Instagram, yeah. and he just looks big, yeah. like big this season, you he know what it. I mean? And I think it is a season where it's going to be just like a coming of age for him. Obviously, we spoke to him during lockdown, and it was kind of like he's just been around loads of clubs and never really settled. It feels like this season is his season to really mark yeah. a claim on it. Um, but for my player of the season, I'm going to go for a little bit of a different one here. I'm going to go for Malik Ali, to be honest. Okay. okay. He could either be amazing, he's going to get 10 to 15 goals, lots of assists, or he's going to get one goal and one assist, and he's not going to play in the team. He's he does very, have that X factor, doesn't he? He does. He's just, just, got, does. He just got that little bit of quality yeah. that I feel just excels him above other people at times. Okay. Yeah. But it's consistency, and that will be his big challenge for this season. Can Michael Clegg make him into that player who is going to be the star performer week in, week out, or is he just going to be a goal here and then quiet for five games? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's a bit of a dark horse I've gone for, but okay, if he shines... I completely good. agree with you as well. Both very good decisions, but <laughs> I'm once again going to go for someone that I think you'll understand my reasoning. I'm going to go Greg Hartley. Oh, okay. Because this is the type of league where... You can score goals, but there are also so many chances. You can be the best defence in the league, yeah. but you can concede chances without even meaning to. In just one minute, there'll be just a breakthrough on goal. And yeah. I saw this from January onwards when Clegg came in and um, signed Hartley. The amount of saves he makes, mm. the amount of points he won us, as much as we were very convincing. Yeah. Like, and I can't help but go back to that Morpeth game. Um, I can't remember the exact month. I think it was early February, maybe. That game where we won convincingly 4-1, it was 1-1 and he saved the penalty. He did, yeah. And there are little things like that that I just feel like... Yeah. It's a weird comparison here, but it's almost like when Bruno Fernandes signed for United. Then Could he have made like, the player of the season yeah. if he had been there the whole season? And I feel yeah. like if Hartley had been there for the whole season, he would have staked that a massive claim for being the player of the season last season. Hopefully he can maintain his form and, well, to just kick on from there and save us even more points because yeah. that is something that we will rely on massively because I think mm. it goes a bit under the radar the defensive aspects because you do look for goals you do look to win convincingly and to score as many times as you can but 
<laughs> wow. I, I do I do have a lot of faith in Hartley, and I think like we all do. 100%. And it's been so, yeah. working really hard exactly. for the pre-season. So. Exactly. What are we going to... Are we going to judge this on like how many Tom Langford Man of the Matches we're getting? No, because then I'd obviously skew it, wouldn't I? No, because I have not. <laughs> I have not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, played, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Ali's got another Man of the He went off in fifth minute. La- lad, he's gone Blackpool. Oh, no. <laughs> um, no. Uh, it's something to consider anyway. We'll, we'll yeah. compare it to what yeah. we thought at the end. So, Michael Brewster, Greg Hartley and Millie Ali. There are predictions. We've got our top scorers as well. And we're all pretty confident overall. Yeah. Mm. It'd be interesting to see how this goes throughout the season. Maybe halfway through the season we'll come back to this and see how we're feeling. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. January time. Day, maybe like Christmas time, yeah. Before you go off home. Brilliant. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I think that somewhat sums up our first review back. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you're looking forward to seeing Robins playing again because we really are. And we'll be back soon with some more feedback on the matches to come. Thank you very much. I've been Jake, Tom and Sean. We'll see you soon.